Now on YouTube, I am the tough man. I'm doing something uh, brand new to my channel. It is called 999. Now it is a DS game and it's something that I've never really done before. I've done one other and that's prompted me to actually do this one. Um, thanks to, well, everybody knows, uh, Vasky. Vasky is the guy who just me Tinkerer and I've got to say guys that he got me into animes and he just so happened to mention something and I went and downloaded it and I thought what is this and it was a visual novel I'd never heard of them in my life I didn't know what they were so I proceeded to go along and uh, I was reading along and then the next minute I was given a choice and apparently all these choices lead up to what kind of path you go down as you're going through this visual novel now that to me isn't a brilliant idea why have I not known about this why why have I not known about this just pure and simple guys why have I not known about this before and he then said you know what 999 is a brilliant one to do um, and play so why don't you do that for your channel and I went to have a look into it guys it's a DS game as you can see here um, that's why I've got two sides of the screen unfortunately the way that this is set out I can't really do anything else you're just gonna have to deal with the screen as it is I would recommend you do watch this in full screen mode so you can see everything that's going on so let's go ahead and press start it's nine hours nine persons nine doors no idea what it's about guys all I've been told is uh, that it's good <laughs> that's all I've been told. I don't know anything about the game at all, going in blind. Apparently, like I said, it's a visual novel, so I will be doing voices, I'll be doing all that kind of stuff, guys. And uh, I like that kind of stuff, so. You will start from the beginning of the game. Would you like to overwrite? Yes, I'm quite alright with that, thank you. Now, I have turned the sound down slightly, so I hope there's going to be no major sounds going on in the game. But you will be able to hear them in the background, just not, you know, a lot. This game is fiction. All names, characters and incidents portrayed in this production are fictitious. I'm glad. I'm glad. So, 999. Here we are. Sounds ominous. Already from the title. I've, I, to be honest guys, DS games have never been my thing. I've never played uh, DS. I've really... I, I know there's two different screens, which is why this looks a little bit strange to you guys. What's going on? Six, five, four, three, two. Is that a tide sonic? It certainly looks like a tide sonic. Oh no. Oh no, don't tell me the Titanic's gonna sink. I would never have fucking known that. Oh, well, God, I've gotta do I might do something here. A loud noise startled Junpai awake, and his eyes snapped open. I've got some buttons down here. What is it? Does that correspond to this? Oh, it does. We've got start, we've got map, calc, file. What they are, guys. What's this here, look? As they adjusted to the light, he realised that he didn't recognise his surroundings. Oh! Junpai says. With a crack, Junpai's head connected with something metal. He rolled over and threw out his hand to steady himself, but, but he found himself groping at empty air. His balance lost, his still fuzzy mind struggling to understand what was going on. Junpai tumbled down to the cold grey floor. How did you know it was grey? Oh, god damn it! Junpai says. God, what the hell? Junpai glared around the room, still trying to determine where he'd woken up. God, he's a bit forgetful, isn't he? The fall had shaken the last cobwebs of sleep from his mind, and he finally understood where he'd fallen from. The stars. It was a bed. A three-level bunk bed, in fact. Junpai had fallen, apparently, from the topmost bunk. His shoulder hurt, his knee hurt, his hip hurt, his entire body hurt. Jesus Christ. How the hell did you manage to fall out? You've even got a little rail in there. Come on, Junpai. He could feel a bump forming on his forehead where he'd slammed it against the low ceiling. So not only that, he'd smacked himself there and then he just dived, he proceeded to dive out of bed and kill himself. He wondered if that bump was the reason he felt his vision wavering a bit, but that seemed unlikely. At first, 
He thought the tremor that ran through his legs was just another effect of his rude awakening, but as he looked around he realised it was real. The whole room was shaking, as you can see. Was it an earthquake, he wondered? It didn't seem likely. It was shaking far too quickly for an earthquake. Could you actually feel earthquakes whilst you're floating on a boat? Just, could, could, could you do that? Is that possible? Let me know in the comments section, guys, if you would actually feel an earthquake in the middle of the sea. To me, it would just be like uh, if there was an earthquake. And you, you, do you know when you've got a little toy boat in the bath? I'm not saying I've got, you know, I've got a toy boat in the bath, guys. I'm 27 years old. You know, it's been a long time. But uh, if you were to wobble that bath, the the boat would stay still. It's the water that moves. So would you actually feel it? Anyway, that's uh, enough science for today. Um, there we go. Then again, Junpei had no idea what it was, if not an earthquake. He tried to tell himself it was important. <laughs> nah, shaking on a boat, it's its absolutely natural. It's fine. Junpei rubbed the growing bump on his head. Oh, ginger climbed to his feet. His balance regained. He finally took his first good look around the room. It took all of two seconds, by looks the thing. And muttered to himself. Where am I? Junpai, what have you been fed? Can you really not remember? His pain momentarily forgotten in the face of the confusion of his circumstances, Junpai looked around the room once again. Minutes passed while Junpai struggled to get his bearings. Okay. Has he been slipped some cyanide or something? He's just, you know, he's, he's totally lost his mind. Then, as suddenly as they had begun, the tremors ceased. A cold silence fell over the room. Ominous. From somewhere far away, Junpai could hear the sound of metal squeaking. <laughs> metal squeak? He felt his stomach tighten. There was a thousand things that sound could have been, but none of the things he could think of were good. In an attempt to distract himself, Junpai looked around the room once more. Because once is not enough. There was a stove that looked more like, more antique than functional. The three level bunk bed had mattresses that were so thin they were little more than blankets. God yeah, it was like prison beds. On the other side of the room was an identical bed and a set, uh, and set in the wall between the beds was a slightly dirty iron door. The hell? It's got number five on it. The first thing Junpai noticed about the door was the number roughly emblazoned across it. On the surface of the door, in red paint, someone had written... 17. No, guys, actually, it's, it's just five. It's just five. False alarm. Five? Junpai says. What's this five mean? I don't know, Junpai, you've got me. Suspicious and still utterly confused, Junpai approached the door slowly. Maybe it's like a strip joint behind it. Standing at last in front of the door. God, did it really take him that long to get to the door? Junpai grabbed hold of the L-shaped handle. A push yielded no movement. And a pull, the same result. A few more tries cemented the truth in Junpai's mind. It wouldn't open. You know, usually when you do it once, push, it doesn't move, pull, doesn't move... Usually it only takes one turn to figure out it's not going to move. A few more tries, yeah, it's not going to open, Junpai. It didn't matter how much he pushed and shoved, the handle wouldn't budge. It's a keycard system or something. Next to the door was an odd-looking device that reminded Junpai of a card reader. Well, to say that if this is the Titanic, how the hell did they have card readers in them days? Surely they didn't. It didn't take a genius to figure out that the odd-looking device was keeping the door shut. Junpai knocked, hard, on the door. Knock, knock. Who's there? Doctor. Doctor who? And so on and so forth. Hey! Hello? Is, is anyone there? Open the door! So abs! There was no response. Junpai threw his left fist into the door. He threw his left fist into the door. 
and stopped. The hell is this? He wasn't really sure what else to say. On his left wrist was a bracelet of a sort he'd never seen before. In the centre was a large LCD display. Again, something you wouldn't find on the Titanic. It looked nothing else. It looked like nothing else so much as a watch, but it clearly wasn't that. After all, it showed only a single number. That's five o'clock, it's quite obvious. Five? That... <gasps> That's the same as the door! Junpai says. True, the numbers were the same, but he had no idea what that might mean. All he knew was that it was strange, and new, and he wanted it off. Let me guess, he can't get it off. Junpai flipped his hand over, as if to remove a watch. But... <gasps> the other side of the bracelet was solid. No buckle, no clasp, nothing. It doesn't look particularly solid, you know. It's, it's still got something in the middle there. Still five o'clock, says Junpai. <laughs> he sighed and flipped the thing back over. There were a number of rivets around the rim of the face, perhaps... He pushed them, but nothing happened. On a watch, they might be dials for adjusting date or time, but on this bracelet, they did nothing. Junpai was at a loss. What was he going to do? Growing more desperate, he began to tug at it. I hope he's still tugging at his watch. However... <laughs> Damn! Oh, it's not good. Damn thing won't come off. A steel ring ran from the face around Junpai's wrist and back into the face. A face? Oh, right, okay. I've missed a comma there, guys. See, English language is fantastic. A steel ring ran from, ran from the face around Junpai's wrist and back into the face. He wouldn't be pulling the bracelet off any time in the near future. The hell is the deal with this thing? I don't know, Junpai. Frustration and desperation were beginning to mix as the reality of the situation began to dawn fully on Junpai. So much was happening and none of it made any sense. Junpai felt as though he were about to explode. Where am I? Junpai says. Why the hell am I here? Why? Why? What the hell happened to me? Whoa. There's flashes there, guys. It was at that moment he noticed the window. The window was round, rimmed in riveted brass, like a window from an early 20th century ship. What? What? Wait, am I in a ship? Junpai walked slowly around the window. Uh, slowly around it. Slowly toward the window. He could see nothing beyond it but thick, impenetrable darkness. Junpai squinted, trying to see something, anything. It was at that moment. Oh, that's never good. What the... You've got to be kidding me. What the hell is going on here? A crack split the glass of the window. For a moment, Junpai stared at it. Then the window burst and water began pouring into the room. What the hell? God damn it! I mean, he's said that a few times, hasn't he? I think something a bit stronger would come out of my mouth, you know what I mean? Like, Fuck me! What the hell is going on? Junpai yelled and spun round, his feet slipping on the water, already coming in through the window. He ran for the door. Hey! Anyone? Is anyone there? Come on, if you're there, say something! There was no reply. As Junpai screamed and pounded on the door, the water began to rise. It was now ankle deep on the floor and rising quickly towards his knees. Things were not looking good for Junpai. Not good at all. He needed to find a way out and quickly. Junpai ran a hand across his forehead, brushing the sweat out of his eyes and looking around the room. Hoi! Seek! A way out. Right, is this where I step in? Okay. So, right, hang on a minute. Do I... Whoa! Operations during an escape. 
During an escape, you can move to different parts of the room by touching the bottom screen. Since many areas require the uh, very exact selection, we recommend use the stylus mouse button. Search during an escape. During oh well, you know this, don't you? Well, I know this. Uh, areas you can investigate will be highlighted yellow the moment you touch them. Depending on the nature of the location you touch, you might find an item or a hint. Begin searching by touching places on the bottom screen. How to move. Touch the triangle icon on the bottom screen. Doing so will change the viewing angle of the room and move you to different locations. You can do the same thing by pressing left, right and down on the control pad. Directional buttons. Bird's eye view. If you want to know where you are, touch the X on the camera icon on the bottom screen. This will show you where you are and what direction you're facing. Saving during an escape. Pressing start will allow you to save. Not entirely sure what that button is on the PC. If you want to quit, we recommend pressing start. Purpose of the escape. Well, I would think that's quite obvious. To escape. The purpose of each escape is to get out of the room. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Holy shit, that's news to me. How you do that depends on the room. You'll need to search all throughout the room to discover what you'll need to do to get out. Search for hints and items that may help you find a way out. Okay, so we've got some things on here, guys. We can switch around here. Let's go and have a look at the door. More likely the key thing. I guess that's the lever, huh? Maybe if I pull it. Well, looks like pulling on the lever just makes a weird noise. Great. The light's still red and the display hasn't changed. Damn it. Why the hell isn't this thing opening? So, okay. Um, not that. We haven't got any items, as of yet. Man, this is a pretty poor excuse for a bed. There's barely any space between the bed and the ceiling. I don't think I even have enough space to turn over. I bet money... I bet money this was for poorer passengers. Or maybe the ship, ship's crew. I've got to die someday. What? That seems to be a bit out of the blue. I've got to die someday, but I sure as hell ain't, don't want it to be here. Okay, so we've got to have a look for something. Um, what about up here? Oh, what are those guys? Found some about items. During an escape, investigating certain parts of the room will allow you to obtain items. Once you've obtained an item, you'll be able to go to the item screen. Touching the L item uh, on the top left will take you to the item screen. While on the item screen, you'll be able to investigate, hold, and combine items that you've found. If you want to investigate an item you found, touch the icon for that item in the item screen. And then touch search in the top right hand corner of the bottom screen. Okay, we've found something here. What's this? Note from bulletin board. The note's got a, you know, two red triangles and two blue triangles. Okay, can I do something with this? Right, uh, uh, no, I don't think I can at the moment. Investigate with an item. Touching an item while on the item screen will select that item. While an item is selected, touching L on the back will return you to the room. Uh, with, to the room investigation screen. If you look down at the bottom left corner of the bo bottom screen, God, there's so many bloody places to look, you should see the icon. I do, I see the icon. This shows you are holding the item. If you hold an item while investigating the room, you may trigger a reaction. Nice. Investigate suspicious areas with different items to see if anything happens. Pressing up on the control pad will select another item for you to hold. Okay, well I've only got one item, so there's no point in pressing... What about this here? Look, what's this? Picture frame. Well, I don't... Unless there's something on the back. No, it's just a picture of the Titanic. What can I combine these things then? Like this. Combining. What's this? Apparently not then. Um Pressing back. Okay. We can do that. We can do that. So whoops, I'm uh, holding thingy at the moment. I wanna hold that. Oh man, right, we've gotta find a way out of here. What's uh, what's this down here? Is that for me to 
Can I have a look in the sink? Doesn't seem like there's anything hidden in the sink. This is the only drain in this room. Oh man. Well, maybe if we... Can we put this through here? Groove on the left side of the sink looks like it's made to have a key card swiped through it, or something like that. Maybe if I can find a card, I can unlock this thing. Well, can I actually use this item then, or what? I can't remember how to use items. I read it, but... What the hell is this, man? I really don't know what I'm doing. Uh. Hmm. I just read the damn thing as well. Right, um, is there anything in the stove? This is the door to the stove. Well, it opens easily enough. Sure wish the door to get out of here was that easy to open. There's something in there, look. Oh yes, screwdriver. Can I open this? Well, the screwdriver got screw there. The screwdriver got the screws off easy enough. And here's the picture. Anything on the back? Oh yeah, there is. Look at this. Right, have I got to... What have I got to do, man? I am seriously screwed. Uh, okay, so we've got some numbers with some pictures there. I would assume that those things correspond to this. Um, what way is it, though? Is it, the, is it pointing upwards? Is it like that? So we've got two... Nine, two, nine, three, six. Let me just write that down. Two, nine, three, six. Okay. Um, combining items. If you take two items you found and combine them, they may turn into something else. To do this, select an item on the item screen and touch the combine on the top part of the bottom screen. Then select the second item and touch combining. If the two items can be combined, then you will receive a new item. If they cannot be combined, nothing will happen. <coughs> Screwdriver. I wonder why that's there. Can I... No. It's... This is totally a stove. Nothing inside, though. What about this on the top here? Can I open that? I can. Oh, what's this? Well, let's see if there's anything in here. Huh. Looks like there is. Grab that. A key? Yeah, there's a little blue key in the bottom of this pot. Odd. Okay. That's really interesting. Um, we go back. Oh, what did I just... I think I clicked on that, didn't I? No dice, it's locked tight. Let's see if there's anything in the keyhole. Ha ha! Here we are, guys. Right, 2936 it is. Looks like I've got to put the key into the keyhole in order to enter a number. So how do I do that then? How do I actually use the item? Oh, there we are. I just click on it. Alright, let's see what happens if I put this blue key in the keyhole. And nothing. I guess I'm going to need some sort of code for the dial. Okay, guys, alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that there. I think, you know, over 20 minutes. I'm going to try to keep it 20 minutes episodes. Um, if you've liked this episode, please do leave it a like, guys. It's the start of a brand new series for my channel. Um, I'm not sure how often these videos are going to come out, but as long as I'm enjoying it, is as long as I'm going to play it, guys. And I'm, I'm actually enjoying this. It's a new type of game to me. Um, and I like the puzzle aspect of things at the moment. I'm really liking this. So, again, guys... If you like the series, please do leave a like. It does massively help the series, and it also massively helps my channel. So until next time, I've been the Tough Man. As always, thank you very much for watching, and stay safe.